Let me show you more advanced features about how to compute linear regression even with multiple predictors in R. So I'm going to use this data set. You can download it here or you can download the script and play around with it. So basically I'm going to import this data set. Okay, if you take a look at this, you have tons of variables inside. I'm going to rename them. Okay, and now let's plug those names into this variable. Okay, so now it's, it's much better. Let's take a summary. And let's do some inspection so we can do some exploratory analysis. For instance, if you take a look at height, there's something weird here. So the median and the mean are more or less the same. And the first quantile is 68, this is in inches, so, and, and the third quantile is 72, the maximum is 77, but this 29 doesn't sit, uh, doesn't sit right, okay? So let me plot this thing. I'm going to create a panel, a little bit larger panel, 3 by 3 and I'm going to plot histograms of all the parameters. And here we go. So, of course, this 29 is around here. It's an outlier, so I want to remove that. So let's plot different stuff there. 11 to 18 and again it seems that the hip has some outliers also the ankle so let's go back and I'm going to do some box plots and there is a really nice feature in box plot not only plots the box plot but if you plug that into a variable you can obtain some information in particular there is this parameter output inside this 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 return function that is telling me actually the actual value of the outlier so here you can see that all the data points are here and this 29.5 is around this point okay let's do that for the heap okay here we see three outliers and you can see there those these are the numbers and the same for the ankle okay three outliers and this series was related if you remember this, there are a couple of formulas to compute body fat. One is called the Bersax equation and the other the series equation it has to do with the density of the body but essentially, you can see that in the case of CD or body fat, you have a couple of outliers there. So you take a look at those. You can see this is the, the one, the, the, the outlier that I was plotting, which is this 47. So you can do this, uh, this outlier removal more efficiently using caret or using the, the parameter in. I'm going to do it by hand. So I'm going to uh, overwrite BMI and I'm going to take all the variables whose height is larger than 25.5 keep below 116 and so on and so forth oh sorry uh, so let's do this and let's plot again the histograms okay uh, that doesn't look to be outliers here and there so this could be an outlier but here we go let's move let's move on okay one thing that i want to check is these two formulas are equivalent okay pretty much so there is a good correlation so basically both formulas are producing the same result. So I'm going to use the variable body fat. I'm going to forget about that. Okay, let's move to regression. So what if I try to, 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 to explain, this is the graph in the New York Times. So in the vertical axis is BMI and in the horizontal axis body fat. I'm going to do the reverse, but basically this is the kind of banana shape distribution that we saw in theory. So I, I want to check if body fat can be predicted accurately using BMI. So I'm going to call this fit one. And uh, let's take some summaries. If I uh, simply print the summary, you can see all the information as usual. If I'm interested only in R square, you can you can compute that extracting the mm, the summary into a one variable and in calling this R square. Okay. In the summary, you can see that this is again nonsense. Nonsense. That means that if your BMI is zero, then your percent body fat percentage of fat is minus twenty five. This is crazy. But again, this is the the one that I'm interested in. Okay, what about R square? R square is not bad, it's 53%, but what does it mean? So you should never stop in R square of a simple plot. Basically, you have to check residuals. So let's take a look at the residual. Okay, this looks pretty much like a Gaussian, but I'm not sure. So there is some variability here. I don't see the tail. So what's the best way to, to test a fit? And, and here is the, the most useful trick in this video. So if you use this parameter to, to plot two by two and plot the fit itself. So this is actually taking the fit out from the function LM and plotting that. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, okay, call this and then plot. Then these two panels are the most important. So the second one is telling me how, uh, what's basically the distance between the distribution of residuals. And the residuals, remember, is the error between the, the prediction or the difference between the variable and the prediction and the real data. 
And if this falls into a straight line, this means that the distribution is normal. So you see a couple of outliers here, but uh, overall we have tons of information that is falling into this line. So this is good. And the residuals fall into a horizontal line. And this is also good. So whenever this red red line here, and I will show you how to compute that in another video. Whenever this red line here is almost horizontal, that means that the residuals are homogeneously distributed. So the condition of homocytosticity is fulfilled. So, so far so good. Just, uh, just a simple caveat, if you use caret, okay, the syntax is as usual, train the formula with the data set and the function. But if you want to, to extract information, you don't use fit2, you have to use fit2 final model, okay? So let's move on. So what if I now plot all the variables? And I'm interested not in all the variables, just BMI, age, abdomen, and size. So this is a, the, the perimeter of, of your belly, let's say, and the perimeter of your, of your leg. So let's plot this data. And a couple of things here. So of course, body fat is correlated with BMI. This is the same plot as before. We don't see any correlation between BMI and age, and we see a strong correlations between the fat in the abdomen or the perimeter of the abdomen and BMI. And that makes sense. If you, if you have a lot of body fat, then you're going to have a large belly and the perimeter of your thigh, okay? I'm not so worried about BMI and abdomen because these are different measures. Remember that BMI is computed with the weight, the weight that you get with your, with, with your scale at home and the height that you get with a ruler. And the, the abdomen, the, sorry, the, the perimeter of the abdomen has to do with the body fat stored in, in your belly. So these are related, of course, but it's not trivial, the connection. But these two are uh, slightly correct. So this correlation is more dangerous. Why? Because basically you're measuring the same variable, which is the perimeter. Here is the perimeter of the abdomen and here is the perimeter of your thigh. So basically, if we plug those variables together, maybe you have some problems of collinearity. And I will explain the problems of collinearity later, but s let's move on a little bit and, and let's see what happened. So now, uh, let's check this. If I fit a multi-regression of body fat versus all the variables in this data set, and I plot the summary, we see something, sorry, this is the, the old summary. You can see that BMI was uh, strongly significant. But if I plot the multi-summary, we see something weird. Now BMI is, is, is not significant, so we don't see any asterisk here. And that means that the error in this slope related to BMI is much larger than the, the value itself. So this is so close to zero that BMI is irrelevant. And this is crazy. And the other thing that we see is that despite the fact that we expect that people with uh, higher perimeter in the thigh has m a larger body fat percentage, this is negatively correlated and not very significant. So what is the problem here? The problem here is that we are introducing correlations in the predictors. So whenever you have this, you have either to remove one of the, pari the parameters, one in, in this case, I'm going to remove thigh, or using more sophisticated things that I will tell you in other videos, okay? So I'm going to repeat this, and instead of using BMI, abdomen and thigh, I'm going to take just the, the perimeter of your belly, the age and body fat, okay? So let's repeat this again, and let's plot the summary. And this is interesting. Why is it interesting? Because before the age was irrelevant. You can see here that it's not very significant. And now when we've removed all these tricky correlations inside the data set, now age is relevant. And this makes sense again. Why? Because everybody knows that your, grandpa your grandfather is fatter than your, your father and your father is fatter than you probably. Okay. So this is relevant. And again, we can see now the strong correlation between the abdomen the perimeter of the abdomen and the body fat percentage. And now remember, if going back to our first feed, only using BMI, we could explain 53% of variability using now your age, uh, where is it? Uh, here, here. Using your age and your abdomen perimeter, th then you're explaining 67%. Uh, so I think BMI is interesting because it provides a kind of summary, but probably the perimeter of your, of your belly of your uh, your abdomen is more relevant to, to predict the degree of obesity. But again, don't stop here. This is for losers and we are winners. So let's plot some, let's do some tests. Here we go. So again, we still have some data points outside the normal. Th this could be an issue. But again, uh, the residual seems to be normally distributed. Okay, this is one thing that we can do. The other thing that we can do is plug the residuals the, the, that we obtain from the feed, so this feed uh, 2, inside uh, the data frame, 
Okay, uh, let's plot the data frame, but removing the predicted variable, okay, just to see how the parameters, and this is interesting, as you can see here, this is zero and zero, that means that the residuals are uncorrelated with the parameters, and I like that, but the most important part is that these red lines are almost horizontal, and that means that the linear assumption that we did at the beginning, saying that this is a linear relationship between body fat and these two parameters, is a good fit. Imagine that this red line with something like a parabola, that would mean that our linear relationship is not good and we would have to introduce a new variable which is abdomen square or something like that. So remember, the main messages of the video, you can do multiple regression with the same line, but whenever you have this, you have to, to check the, the assumptions of, of linear regression and you can do that just by plotting the feed itself and this is another plot which is really interesting, which is plotting the residuals versus the predictors and, and check if these lines are horizontal or not.